Hello, I'm Don Sumner. I'm a professor of geology at UC Davis. And uh, one of the things I study are ancient uh, microbial communities. They're fossilized in rocks. And the, I'm going to show you a sample that we look at in three dimensions. This rock is two and a half billion years old, and it's from South Africa. And the way we make these images is we, we grind off the rock a little bit at a time, and we scan it uh, between uh, each one of those, and then we compile it into a 3D model. Uh, so I will be showing you that. So what we have is this box outlines uh, the data that we have. And so the first thing to do is to make that data um, visible. So to do that, we make a volume. And I'll assign it to one of these buttons here. And we'll get rid of this menu. So here is a virtual rock. So you'll notice that it looks a little funny. Uh, parts of it are transparent and parts of it are opaque. And we can change those to change the look of the rock. So we will first uh, show a palette editor. And I'm going to make it look like the rock actually looks uh, in real life. So the rock. Uh, actually is uh, black and white and uh, so this is what the outside of the rock uh, looks like. So what we have here is the size each one of these arrows at the top is one centimeter long. So the sample is uh, several centimeters in size and if when we look at the real rock what we see is this something like a black and white image like this. The black areas are places where there are little or there are organic inclusions and uh, they represent the remains of the ancient uh, microbial communities. The white areas are places that were filled with water when the community was growing and, and now they're filled with uh, mineral calcite. So my scientific research question for samples like these uh, has to do with what the microbial community looked like when it was growing. Um, there are, it looks like there are peaks here and then there are little bits that sort of drape between these peaks and the morphology is reflecting how the microbial community behaved. So for example, maybe it was photosynthetic and it was responding uh, to sunlight. But it's hard to tell that from a two-dimensional sample. I mean, if we were looking around the edges, we could go, okay, well, these are layers that go through. Um, there's an area here where we have a little bit of a, of a fracture. Uh, but what we really want to know is just what the microbial community looked like. So what we can do is we can make parts of uh, the sample transparent. And we use this palette editor to do that. And so I can make the mineral components transparent. And then uh, it really shows up the microbial communities and how those layers uh, go into the rock. Uh, black and white's not so fun, though. So I'm going to load what we call a color palette, which is a color scheme that I developed uh, before that really shows off the microbial communities. So what we have here are places that are red, were black in the original item. So you can see it on the color palette here. And some of the black is still black. And then the parts that go into the minerals are these blues and yellows. So that the when the uh, uh, little um, symbol is down at the bottom, that means it's transparent, so you don't actually see any any of the yellow uh, in this particular sample. I could change that by selecting it and increasing the transparency, and you can see that the parts that are yellow now, like here and here, are the places where we had the mineral structure. So I'm going to uh, change that back uh, more or less to the way it was because I like having them transparent. OK, so now we have this sample. And we have all these um, uh, voids in it. We see all this structure. But I'd still like to you know, cut away a little bit more of it. 
Uh, so we can do it with different um, what we call algorithms. So we can set up a cutting plane algorithm. And what that allows me to do is remove even more of the sample. Ah, uh, so when I did that, I'm going to switch hands with the wand here. When I use this cutting plane, I suddenly see that there's an area of the microbial structure right here that has a really interesting curvature. And that suggests that the mat was, uh, was curving in. I don't know why it grows that way yet, but by looking at these sorts of things and comparing them to, to modern mats we see, uh, we can develop growth models for them. Okay. And so here's another area um, right in here where there's a part of uh, the microbial matter biofilm that's extending into this void space. So that one's an interesting place and I think I want to try looking at it in a different way. So now we're going to do what we call a seeded isosurface and that gives you a layer uh, that's all one color. Okay, and it gives me another dialog box. We'll put that one out of view down here. Okay. So now I can make uh, a surface that outlines a certain color. So I'm going to go for this blue one here. Uh, turned out purple. I can compare that. That's the same color that you have uh, in the palette editor here. So this particular one that I did, unfortunately, also captured this fracture in the back. So I don't like that one. So I'm going to turn it off using this menu here. And I'm going to try another one that's more in the front of the sample. So I think I'll do one uh, that's right here. So you can capture that yellow spot here. Okay, so I have part of the crystal structure right here. Now I'm going to turn off the volume and we can just sort of see the outline of that crystal structure. There are other uh, things we can do. So one of the key aspects of looking at samples like this is trying to decide how what we see in three dimensions compares to what you see in two dimensions. So to do that, we often use a seeded slice. I'm going to assign that to another button. Here. Now when I push this one, it's going to give me a surface, an opaque surface. So I'll put one right in here. And again, the colors uh, correspond to, to the color palette. So this yellow area uh, is the part that was white in, this, in the uh, original structure, it's right in the middle of these mineral areas. And you can see that there's a gradation from those mineral areas into the microbial area. Um, and that reflects the, the, the blue and purple in this area reflects the first crystals that grew, that were growing on the microbial community uh, itself. And we were one of the scientific questions would be how those microbial communities um, influence the growth of the crystals. Okay. So we have all of these features uh, in the microbial communities. And another project of mine is looking at similar microbial communities that are growing in Antarctica. In that case, what we can measure is the height of the structures. We don't actually get the interior parts. We just get the, the heights. So one of the things we want to do is try to measure the height uh, in these microbial structures, get at them. So I'm going to use yet another tool. Uh, this time we'll use the measurement tool. Yeah. And we have to move the dialog box. I think I can get rid of the uh, palette editor now. So we'll get rid of that. Um, I think I want to keep the visualization element list though. Um, okay. Okay, 
so we have this measurement dialog box. And what we have is well, there's, uh, we can measure position, distance, or angle. And the location of each point shows up under the positions. And then we get distances and angles if we choose to measure those. So I want to measure the height. So I'm going to choose uh, the distance. And then um, I can uh, manipulate the data and uh, measure the height. Okay, so I think that this structure, um, there's a layer that comes from here and goes up into this zone, comes back down. So I think the height is from about here to somewhere about the edge here, set off to the side. So I'm going to measure that distance. And so when I uh, click the measurement button, it gives me a little cross that I can put uh, in the sample. And I can actually also move the sample while I'm doing that to make sure I get it in the right place. So I'm going to put it uh, right here inside. And then um, I was thinking that the layer comes up this way and down. So I think I want the other point right in here. Okay. So there's my measurement. And uh, we have the number of the distance right here. And so that says 5,500 about. And I happen to know that the, um, the units in here are microns. So that's uh, equivalent to five and a half millimeters. So it's, uh, uh, it's very small, um, but it certainly is a, a measurable uh, height distance. So there are other things that, that we can do with this data, including measuring angles and, and characterizing different properties. And um, I have several students that are, that are um, doing this with different uh, microbial samples in the rocks. And we also use the same program for uh, looking at um, CAT scans of samples, modern samples, samples of different ages. And uh, the goal is to characterize how the microbial communities grew and to take those, that geometry and turn it into growth models. So we understand how microbial communities uh, respond to their environment and how they've uh, evolved through all of Earth history. Uh, so